and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Treachery. So I'm pretty excited about playing this deck right here. Uh, we've been talking about it uh, throughout the last few days of putting together an Agent of Treachery with quasi-duplicate deck and your rock and all that kind of stuff. And so that's what we're doing. We're put, throwing this kind of all together and this deck looks pretty awesome. So this is, this is what I put together here. We'll see how it goes. So basically what we got here is we're trying to get Agent of Treachery in play, steal something, and then once it's in, and hopefully have your rock in play first, and then we get the double triggers and we get to steal two things. And then once we do that, then we copy it with quasi duplicate. We can copy it with mirror image, spark double, and just start stealing all sorts of stuff. That's the goal of the deck. <laughs> we'll see how it works. I have a find to get back, um, to get back some creatures, and then also give me like a sweeper in the main deck as well with finality if need be against some aggro decks. Um, but like Cavalier Thorns can, you know, like if we play Cavalier Thorns, we may mill over a good amount of stuff that maybe we want to get back with finds. Um, I do really like the the interaction of Cavalier Thorns with Quasi Duplicate, of course, like how it mills over Quasi Duplicate and you can jump start it from the graveyard. I really like that interaction. Um, plus, you know, like for milling over some stuff, you know, having a Muldrotha to cast it, always good. Eldrotha is also an elemental, so triggering Risen Reef. Um, and can Muldrotha also fills our curve from going from five to six to seven to get to Agent of Treachery for Neoform and Vanifar. Um, yeah, there's there's just like this is just kind of like just a bunch of cards that I like playing that I wanted to play. I did throw an Immortal Sun in here too for all the Planeswalker decks. Why not? We just got an Immortal Sun in here. Um, you know, just why not? So we got one of those. Uh, Sideboard, we got a second Immortal Sun for the Planeswalker decks. We got a Masker Girl for um, aggro, I suppose, in like Nessa decks, basically. We got Hostage Shakers for, for vampires. Plague Mares for vampires. Got those in there. Um, an extra fine finality to get stuff back from decks that are trying to kill all of our stuff. And we just kind of have like everything in here. You know, we have Veil of Summer, Shifting Ceratops. This deck has everything. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play. Um, so yeah, for for a bunch of zombies, that's what we kind of have. We have like finality in the main, and then in the board we got a couple legions ends, another finality. Um, that's kind of about it. It's not like a lot against a bunch of zombies. Um, you know, Masker Girl, I suppose. But most of the zombie decks right now are like the 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 slower your rock zombie decks and like maybe we can like steal a bunch of stuff in those kind of matchups oh yeah and then we also have like just the agent treacheries they they steal field of the dead so we can do that too we can steal field of the deads um so yeah this this deck kind of has everything let's play some matches i'm excited let's do it we're gonna just play it over in ranked sultai treachery Oh yeah, there's there's so many options in Soul Tie right now. That's true. It's it's our color combination that we've been playing the most recently. There's so much to do with it. We had the donation deck that went 5-0 earlier. Um, play that over in a league, so not not as quite as strong competition as ranked. But you know, didn't we won all of our matches, so can't complain. All right, let's see how we do. Ooh. Man, this deck, or this, this hand needs a Risen Reef. I'm gonna keep it though. We draw a Risen Reef, we're golden. Okay, Paradise Druid can turn into a Risen Reef. Um, best possible scenario, we just draw a land, though, and we get to Cavalier. Boo. Ah, 
We would have we would have gotten there. So I don't have enough blue mana to go Risen Reef plus quasi duplicate Risen Reef. I guess unless it hits a blue source here. Okay, not bad though. Good turn, good turn. Boom. Okay. Our deck's perfect. So Plague Mare seems good against the Gutter Bones deck. I wasn't blocking with the elf anyway. It just kinda gave just gave me like options. But yeah, I wasn't blocking with the elf. Might as well tap it. I do want these. And I guess I'm supposed to Plague Mare Legion's End. I don't even know. I don't even know if Plague Mare is necessary. For, like, Gutter Bones is like, meh. I don't even need to do that for Gutter Bones. Let's get rid of Immortal Sun. Hmm. Three cards. Do I want to get rid of Neoform? The Spark Double is going to go with me having these extra four drops. I kind of like one find, but I don't really want a second find. I'm going to take out Neoform. But I kind of like the one find. <laughs> Sorry, Rex. Yeah, I've played a couple of decks utilizing Cavalier Dawn, but they haven't gone the best. Hasn't gone the best, to be honest. It is, it is kind of hard. Ah, uh, thanks, Dropsy. And I'm just gonna get rid of that thing. That thing's really scary. Hey, don't start any fires without me. Say hi to my fiery friends. Chandra. Why did I take out Immortal Sun again? Okay, well if we don't if we're not hitting land drops like this, we're just gonna be dead. drop yep so it's Chandra aristocrats
So good to know for game three, because we're not winning this game. Well, maybe. Don't worry. I brought company. So we go to two. We draw untapped land. We get to Agent of Treachery, the Chandra. Temple, you're killing me. Bleh. If we would have drawn, if we would have drawn untapped land and they draw land, that could have worked. All right, Chandra's a big problem. No, I should just. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to immortal sun it though. I don't know. They like they probably have like Angrass Rampage or Bedevil or things like that that just destroy Immortal Sun. Alright, we'll play Plague Mare. And Masker Girl. And Find is out. I don't really need the Muldratha. Get a Neoform back in here. Actually, both the Neoforms. Okay. How am I supposed to put one of these cards back? This is like a perfect hand. I guess it's your rock, I guess. Yeah, no, we need all we need all of these cards. Can I get rid of Choop? If they have, if they have, if they just have priests, though. I know Yurok can just do some really crazy stuff. No, are you kidding me? Fungal infection. Ugh. So gross. We need to find Legion's End for this butcher. So gross. Yeah, this is like the perfect hand for them, honestly. It's honestly just a perfect hand. Gotta do some blocking. So questions, if you're new to Arena, on a budget, what should you use wild cards on? Are you kidding me? What is this? Basically, that, that answer... It's, it's really impossible to answer, to be honest. It's what, what decks you want to play changes for everybody. Like, I, I can't really have an answer of, like, tell, you, tell somebody to play, like, this a specific deck.
what a hand. That was unbelievable. I can send you a link. Here's like the the kind of like the standard metagame that you can kind of go through and see see like what kind of deck you like and and you know like what doesn't have like a ton of rares that kind of stuff. I do recommend like if you're if you are if you're not planning on on you know spending money on arena and you're gonna have a very limited WoW card situation, I recommend waiting one month because a month a month from now is when rotation is, and so I recommend waiting until rotation in a month. Um, you know, like, you still still play, like, with whatever cards you have and still, you know, like, uh, try to, um, you know, play and get better and stuff like that. But if if you're not going to be adding any more resources into Arena during rotation, I recommend um, just waiting there if you can. As far as like potential decks that you can play um, on the YouTube channel, I have a playlist for rotation proof decks. So decks that are made up on um, just completely of cards that don't rotate. And you can check that out for like ideas. for rotation proof stuff. And so yeah, I recommend checking out the the playlist there on the YouTube channel. You know, look for rotation proof Monday. And then, you know, you can kind of see like see what decks look interesting like maybe like mono Mono Red Cavalcade. That's probably that'll probably be a good place to to go. But we'll have to know. Like standard's gonna change a lot at rotation. It will. All right, we got vampires. Okay, have a good night, 619. I'll see you on Monday. Let's cry first. I have a little bit more information here. I kind of want to ditch the Leafkin Druid. No, it'll just be the breeding pool. I guess I walked into that. I could have spark doubled instead. I kind of wanted to just play the card they knew about and save spark double because you know, like we could also find like risen reef. Something like that.
All right. I was being too cute to just play the spark double. This quasi duplicate can, can copy the other things anyway. All right, hopefully we find Risen Reef or, you know, any of our top end. Perfect. So I can go get Cavalier Thorns or Yurok with Chupacabra, or I can go grab Risen Reef with Leafkin Druid. Or, hear me out. Give me that. We just double treachery because that's fun. Even if we don't have anything very good to steal. No, this doesn't flip on their side. This doesn't... It's not like Nicobolus the Ravager. It doesn't say exile it and then transform it. It would, it would transform on my side. Alright, Plague Mirror, Legion's End... I kind of want Vela Summers for their removal spells. We saw the power of Chupacabra that game. An extra fine finality. Guess Masker Girl too. All right, we have too many good cards. That, that whole problem, too many good cards. Stopping Soren seems really good. All right, don't want Masker Girl. We're going to cut Muldratha. We're going to get rid of Spark Double with having these hostage takers. We'll get rid of a quasi duplicate. Um, I think get rid of the mirror image. Is Vanifar too slow? Yeah, I think Vanifar is mostly going to be too slow. Gosh, it's still 64. If we don't have Vanifar, we don't need mirror image. I guess we're just kind of trimming on these things. Those things are so good, though. No, don't need um don't need uh don't need ceratops for any reason in this matchup. It's not a ceratops matchup. Alright. Thanks, Rex. Oh. 
We're gonna hopefully get to. I don't know. This is this is a really fast hand. I was gonna say hopefully get to six for finality, but this Knight of the Ebon Legion will probably be too big by then. Just slows me down though. Garrett is a Danto Vanguard. I have a good blocker for Conquistador, but the Knight of the Ebon Legion is still just a huge problem. Kill this Knight of the Ebon Legion. I need more Neoforms. I need to grab Chup I need Chupacabra. They had Triple Knight the first game, but I had Triple Chupacabra. I need less Quasi Duplicate, more Neoform. Just how this game's played out. Agent of Treachery definitely looked way too slow on the draw. And same with the Mortal Sun. These cards just look like nonsense. Well, Treachery costs seven mana. I can't can't treachery it. Cost seven mana. I now have five mana. Can't just play it for five. I wish I could. Cost seven though. Perfect. Wow, what a draw. Hostage taker. Trying to save me. When I'm so close to dying. So 
So I think my opponent has like Champion of Dusk and stuff like that. Um, could. Could have copied Hostage Taker, taking the Conquistador also, so they don't have like that trigger available. But now, like playing Immortal Sun shuts down Soren, so like we don't have we don't have to worry about dying to like Soren tick up. That's it. The scoops. All right, one and one. Still tied treachery. Dude, Hostage Shaker was perfect. What a great... What a great uh, card there. And then, yeah, like, I guess, yeah, that Immortal Sun shutting down the Soren plan. That worked out very well for us, too. I, like, do they have... Do they not have any more... Um, like, they, they could not have had any more of the 3-4s in their deck, right? Like, the 4-mana 3-4? Because if they just draw that, I die. So, the, they must have only been playing one. Okay, we'll try this. Just draw a green mana. We're on the play. Draw a green mana, and we go from there. Sanctum Seeker, yeah, that that one. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a chance that they took him out, that they only did have the one. That's what I'm saying, like they must that must have been the only one. Man, we have so many good options. Literally every card that we could play in our hand is a really good card to play right now. <laughs> Literally every card. We'll go this way. That's a tilt. All right, so Double Leafkin, Llanowar, Vanifar, Cavalier. All right, so I'm gonna I'm going Choop Quasi Duplicate. Are we gonna go Quasi Dupla Choop, or are we gonna? Like, we're definitely chooping the Ripjaw Raptor. And then we can copy another choop to kill the Spellbreaker or just copy a Risen Reef. Probably just Quasi Dupla Choop. That's fun to say. Yeah, so we'll cast the Quasi Dupla Choop. That's a pretty good turn five for us. Sure. I'll trade a 2-2 two -two for a 3-3. Three -three. Thank you. Good trade. Speaking of trades. <laughs> oh, that treacherous agent. This deck's sweet. All right, so we're going to take out Find Finality. We're going to bring in some Hostage Takers. I think I just want Hostage Taker from the cards that we saw. Um, there could be a Rekindling Phoenix, maybe. Probably not, with, like all those dinos. Let's, let's grab these Hostage Takers. And what's the other card we take out? Immortal Sun? Sure.
Uh, Jay, is Nightpack Ambusher worth it in that deck? With just playing a bunch of creatures? Like, instead of playing, like, Risen Reef? I, I feel like Risen Reef and Cavalier Thorns and just, you know, playing some Cavaliers and Risen Reefs would, would be better than Spellbreakers and Ambushers. Because even, like, Ilharg putting in, like, Red Cavalier is pretty awesome. Even. Or any of the Cavaliers. That is a Risen Reef trigger, but I also want black mana. I'm just going to put it down to the bottom. Hopefully we hit a land off a of Risen Reef and then go can go straight to Cavalier of Thorns. Like, this could go turn 3 Risen Reef, turn 4 Cavalier of Thorns, turn 5 Agent of Treachery. That is a possibility. That's not good that we drew the land. We want the land right here. Darn it. We need those two flipped. I guess I need to keep Leafkin on top and the next card was Forest. Obviously, it's just like, how would we know that? That's not. Just turns out it would have been like that. That's gonna be lethal next turn, no matter what I do. Like if I play if I play Cavalier of Thorns next turn, I'm taking lethal still. Still don't really want Legion's End. Yeah, I just need to be a little bit faster. We couldn't have turn four be an O three on the draw. The deckless command's not updated? Oh, my bad. Sorry. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, should be good to go now for that. And now, now deckless command updated too. Guess I forgot to do that after last time. Yeah, the temple doesn't let us have the bestest of hands, but all good. Hasa Shaker is a card that needs kind of a lot of mana, so just kept the Overgrown Tomb. That raptor can get chooped. But we drew another land. If we draw yet another land, I'm going to feel bad for keeping that overgrown tomb. Alright, feel bad for keeping that. Just two lands underneath it. That's a good card. Good card. Oh, uh, wait. I guess I have to shock now. Whoops. I meant to play one of these lands, but oh well. Yarok.
Yep, sure is, Reptile. Put this one together today, so we talked about wanting to play uh, quasi-duplicate with Agent of Treachery. All right. 2-1 for Sultai Treachery. Rank up. Hey, we're getting kind of close to Mythic. Let's play a couple more matches tonight. Um... Not recently, Reptile. Not really. I'll definitely play against my brews sometimes, but not. it's not real common. No, I do not normally take weekends off. This is a special weekend. I have a friend visiting and stuff, so that's why I put it up here. But no, I usually stream seven days a week. I usually take two, two days off a month. But... This one of the two that I'm taking off is going to be a, a two-parter. I'm taking two days off in a row, which is pretty rare. Yeah, it's, yeah, I stream a lot, but I mean, it's just just me here in my room playing magic and talking to y'all it's not you know it's not the hardest thing it's fun ooh so we're playing against this deck Land. So that's my turn three. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to do turn four agent of treachery. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to cast turn four agent of treachery and play land war elf, and then turn five I can cast agent of treachery plus quasi duplicate it. So that's pretty good. Yoink. Uh, this is a draw two. That is a two mana draw two. I guess two mana draw two is pretty good. So what do we want to steal? Do we want to just steal their lands? Or do I guess take take Lazav in a land? Kethics, Excavators, or Mox Amber? Well, the Lazav turns into Kethis, so we'll take that.
Yeah, Hawkeye has a, a short tail. Uh, no, he was a he was a stray kitty in Iowa, and part of his tail froze off in the winter. Discard, discard Vanifar so I can turn Lazav into Vanifar, and then Overgrown Tomb, and this Temple. But he's doing all good now, though. I mean, I think our opponent's just kind of dead if they don't have Ruinous Blood. Like, so yeah, I, I was, you know, I. Ruinous Blast is kind of a problem. That's why I'm going to take the lands. They couldn't Ruinous Blast. But this next turn, I can I can make three, three more Agent of Treachery, so I can just steal three lands. <laughs> so, like, they're not going to have any way to, like, they're not going to be able to play stuff this next turn. So could this version be turned Teamer and run Ilharg and Ravager of the Worm? Yeah, the problem with Teamer is going to be removal. Ravager or Worm helps, but, uh, you know, earlier removal. Um, but, oh, you'd have Omnath. Yeah, you can you can go, like, Teamer with Omnath. Yeah, Omnath, Ilharg, and then some Ravager Worms. Absolutely. Then you want to... Maybe be a little more elemental heavy if you're on math. Maybe not. About the same. All right, Immortal Sun. Get some Unmort Egos. Some Legion's Ends. Maybe some Negates. Maybe not Negates. Hostage taker is good. Okay, don't really need a find or Muldratha. We'll trim a year rock. Trim spark double mirror image. Uh, Cavalier. We can just kind of cut Cavalier. Okay. I took the breeding pool because it the green casts Kethis. I mean, I know the black does too, but I assume they have less green than, than black in their deck. I thought it was more likely that they had another black source. We got some good options for next turn. So they wanted to uh, scry first and then mill two? Huh. Okay. I don't know, maybe they knew my hand. You know, you never know, like, whenever you're streaming like this, you never know. Some, sometimes people just know your hand and give up, but they also just kind of had nothing. 
like maybe their two cards in hand were bad and they're just they just wanted to give up and go to the next game like that doesn't mean that they actually knew what was in my hand like they did mold a five there and so it's possible they just didn't have anything um good in hand at all that's definitely possible too So I think we want to get rid of just Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, the deck's definitely viable without Muldrotha or Immortal Sun. Absolutely. You can replace those. Um, just replace them with other things. Like, yeah, you're good. Don't need to have them at all. Awesome, Lich went 5-0 over Rakdos Aristocrats. Good job. Way to go. Ugh. Fortress. Fortress of Solitude. Um, I don't really have any special thoughts on the Kethos deck, to be honest. I haven't really played against it that much. Um, it's only like the second time that I've played against it, and haven't really seen it seen it do its thing too much. Alright, let's get a draw two. We just saw a bunch of blue white land, so it should be Esper. Let's get this Immortal Sun in here. Probably the extra find. And some negation. Gates. I don't even know if I really want negate against Esper. Like, so we have like negate Veil of Summer as like possibilities, but Little Teferi is is pretty annoying, and you know you can have those kind of stuck in hand. I want to get rid of a Neo form. Maybe like that stuff. Okay. We'll see if... Like, I'm keeping two Chupacabras. We'll see if that's actually necessary. <laughs> Our deck can be fast at times. Yeah. This hand's good against Thought Erasure. All right, not as good against Thought Erasure now. I don't really like Temple here. I don't think we really need to scry this turn. Um... I want to, I'd rather save the scry land for a future turn where it'll be more important.
Where am I land? Yeah, Pedro, that works. All right, I was not expecting Thief of Sanity. This would be a good time to draw Risen Reef. Ugh, this is the problem with like Veil of Summer and Negate and stuff though. They're kind of bad. I've got time. All right, so Risen Reef's a good draw. Just got us another land into play, though. Got us, dug us a little bit deeper towards our Agent of Treacheries. Right on schedule. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a nice negate. I won't let you win. All right, well, the thing about saving the Temple, though, is I didn't get to play Cavalier and draw a couple of cards there and, and have a good card against Akaya's Wrath, unfortunately, so this might be a bad idea. That did hurt. My Hawkeye's on the nether. This game's not over. Agent of Treachery, please. Darn. thought 
I've got it. This is what. Well, yeah, this is kind of the problem of having Veil somewhere in the gate in the deck. Oh, they did not do that during draw step. Again, should just let me attack because of Othakaya. Well, that was a good mill over. Those cards were not very useful. So, good, good mill over there. Leafkin, Lanwar, Lanwar, Neoform. Keep an open mind. Trust me, I have a plan. We need to move quickly. So we could draw Agent of Treachery and ultimate this to Fairy. Which would be awesome. Ugh, did not do it though. Oh, I forgot about the Ceratops. I just missed that. I want that card. Yeah, I missed that. Now my opponent was going to ultimate Teferi there, and then exile all my permanents. And then I'm dead, because then I don't get to play anything ever again, because all my permanents are gone. And then I eventually draw all my cards, and I can't play anything, because all my permanents are gone. And then I lose, because I draw all my cards. And then yeah, they then they can play new new five mana to fairies that tuck themselves. But also assuming like, you know, we saw the one Thief of Sanity, assume there's like a couple other creatures or something that will do the damage to me. No, I don't really want on Mordigo here. God, this hand just looks just like last hand. Uh looks horrible. This card is, is a terrible card to have in the opening hand like this. Bleh. I guess I should keep this and get rid of this. Or I can just get rid of this. Nah, we'll just keep a couple shock lands. The damage doesn't matter too much. But like if we would draw if if I would have got rid of the watery grave, then I can't play Drowned Catacomb next turn unless I would have I guess I could have shocked in for overgrown tomb though. Yeah, our hands pretty horrible. Again, just like last game.
It's been a good time for like a cavalier or something. Yeah, it would be reasonable to play on Mordigo. You name, yeah, you name Teferi five. Our opponent does not have only have Teferi five as their win condition. They are playing more cards than that as win conditions. Hey, Project Vanner. We even saw Thieves of Sanity game game two, but I'm I'm sure our opponent has more than that. I have practiced hone your prowess. Our deck does have a ton of top end, so like not finding any top end these two games have been has been kind of annoying. Oh my gosh. Both of our quasi duplicates. Oh, this has been a mess. You could use some training. Yeah, Ashiok doesn't matter at all. I don't I don't care about Ashiok one bit. The only thing Ashiok does is stops my one Neo form. And that's it. I don't even have, I don't have Anifar in my deck, so it stops one Neo form in my deck. Show remorse. I'll show restraint. Don't worry, I got this. I leave you. I will lost my appetite. Should have seen that coming. All right, good dino. I won't hide from the world any longer. You know what? I'm not done yet. Correct. We cannot quasi duplicate the dino because it is pro blue, and this is a blue spell, so. It's not like hexproof from blue, so no, we can't, we cannot copy it. Really hoping our opponent doesn't have Dispark or Noxious Grasp. Ah, uh, there goes an Immortal Sun and an Agent of Treachery. for plan B. All right, Teferi gets to draw another card. Let's skip to the good part. So just cycling that disfigure.
All right, time to attack them. They have this turn. They got to find an answer for Ceratops. No time for a break. Hopefully no answer. That keeps them alive. I would have, yeah, if I would have done the attack for three, instead of attacking the three on Teferi, attack the three on them. Hold that thought. Previously. Man, that was a horrible hand we had there for two games in a row. That is the problem with playing two quasi-duplicates. Maybe just draw those and no creatures. That can happen. All right, let's get one more match in here. Oh, is that already? That's already three and two? That was our fifth match? Oh, that was our fourth match. That was our fifth? Oh. Do it anyway. Yeah, let's play one more. Sure, why not? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't count that one. Jaws of Extinction. I yeah. That there was that one that. Yeah, I didn't count that. Let's play one more. This deck's a lot of fun. We're not streaming the next two days. Let's get another one more match in here. No, I lost that one. All right, one more. Hey, look at that, we got spells. Spells are nice. Yeah, the Grixis matches were just pretty long. And I knew that this deck was going to take a while, too, and so we moved on. The, the three matches were pretty good, though. Was, we played an aggro deck, a control deck, and a, and a combo deck. So it was, it was a good three matches. Land, yeah. Got to get this Yurok in here next turn. And then spark double Yurok. This, this, this has to be the exact same red-black deck that we lost to earlier. Doesn't it? Like, these are like the same cards we lost to earlier with Fungal Infection. This has to be the same list. There's no way there's just another person playing red-black with Fungal Infections. Randomly. Okay. 
So they're super aggressive with a bunch of fungal infections. Let's get Veil of Summers to protect. So I want to just take out Risen Reef then. Hey, Doctor. Glad to have you here. Thanks for watching all the YouTube VODs. Welcome, welcome. Good call. Thank you, Matthew. Um... Okay, here we go. That's weird. I had like never seen this red black aggro fungal infection before, and now we've played against it twice. Here in these six matches. My hand is pretty perfect. It's like exactly what I want my hand to look like. I want to be able to go hostage taker and then cast it immediately. Is what we can do here. All right, I ran into that. I ran into that one. So our hand is pretty good against Drill Bit. Yeah, Priest, Priest and Chandra is an awesome combination, absolutely. Doesn't get to work super often. But when it does, it is perfect.
I'd rather use the find finality on the find part. I'd rather use the find part than the finality part. I know I could have finality there. But I'd rather be using the, the find part. Yeah, yeah they're, like to think they just gotta take the other find here. Well, that's a lot of good stuff in there. That's a lot of good, that's a good card too. Cause yeah, I, I get to like sack the Cavalier of Thorns, get back the find, and then find back your rock plus whatever. That's a really good start for us. Chandra was definitely the cause of a loss earlier, and as you saw there, Chandra is really good. Um, I'm going to struggle against Chandra for sure. No, I can't. I can't go unworded ego for the Chandras though. Yeah, I'd rather have a Mortal Sun for Chandra. Um, but I'm just going to go with attacking and just hoping they don't draw one of those four cards. Because uh, I can't I can't really take the turn three off to cast on, on more Ego. And plus, they could have already cast the Chandra anyway at that, by that point. But I'm, I'm going with the... All right, they've taken... I think if they kept their seven, I'd probably ditch this. But they're, they're taking a mulligan. Let's try it. You know, we got Choop on four. We are on the draw, you know, it's possible that we draw some mana creatures here too. Like that. So I know having Leafkin Druid after Risen Reef is nice, but I also just want to block. Blocking's cool. I don't think we need to get that extra one card of value. So they got fungal infection. Are they going to kill this with firebrand? Fungal infection. Well, obviously priest needs to die. If they didn't have priest here, I was going to be playing the Vanifar. So I would be able to go like choop and, and then sack choop immediately, but... Priest has to die. Anyone need a fire started? No. Go get him, buddies. Hmm. Awesome. So we're going to be able to Vanifar, get get your rock, play Hostage Taker, steal the two things. G 
GG's. Too many lands for them there. All right, that was a very quick last game, last match. Good thing we played another match there. All right, so that was Soul Tide Treachery. This was a lot of fun to play. Um, we got ran over the one time by the by the red black deck where I di I didn't sideboard very well against them. Didn't really understand what was going on. Um, didn't see those. Yeah, like basically just didn't really understand how aggressive they were, and we didn't see the. Uh, those fungal infections until like the third game and so i could have sideboarded better in that matchup and then as you saw the second time that we played it i was a lot more ready for it had a lot better uh plan of action against them and then yeah we had the loss to esper where we just drew really really bad games two and three um which that happens um our opponent drew really really bad game one you know like they didn't put up any fight game one and i didn't really put up any fight games two and three it was it was just a really bad match game of magic but oh well that happens but yeah this deck was a lot of fun we got to steal a whole lot of things with agent of treachery um we got to copy agent of treacheries a bunch a couple of times um but yeah to say that was good so no stream tomorrow or sunday so if you're watching this later on youtube uh, you know that we don't have the you know, there won't be any updates for the next two days but then we're gonna be back on monday with rotation proof monday um if you have like rotation proof monday ideas or, or decks that you that you've been like uh playing or or uh, want to see played feel free to send those my way also uh but that's it here for uh soul tie tre treachery um, again, on YouTube, if you're watching over there, hit that hit that like button, hit the hit the subscribe button as well. Leave some comments. Um, let me know what you like about the deck, what you don't like, um, what. Uh, and again, if you have like rotation proof Monday ideas, all that kind of stuff. Um, have any questions, comments, all that kind of stuff. So there we go. Uh, thank you so much for watching Soul Tide Treachery, and I'll see you for the next video.